Alright, lesson 3.2, perfect squares, perfect cubes, and their roots. Uh, over here you'll see on the right hand side, I'm actually going to start with this table with you guys. This table is something that uh, in this year and in the years to come, you definitely just need to know these. Uh, it's going to make your life a lot easier when you're dealing, especially with um, your perfect uh, squares, perfect cubes, cube roots, cube roots, that type of stuff. So, uh, let's start off here. Uh, I think you should know, uh, if you had me in grade 8, you would have known that... Um, I expected you to know all the way down to what 15 squared was, knowing that 15 squared is 225. And I'm also going to, of course, introduce cube roots this year. So hopefully this list you might even be able to do uh, with me as I go through. 1 squared is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. Are you keeping up or what? 121, 144, 169. These ones are backwards. And then 196. That's how I remember those ones. Uh, 225, and lastly, 256. You've probably heard 256 before. It has to do kind of with computers. All right. Now let's talk about cube roots. 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. Okay, so how am I generating this uh, so quickly? 2 times 2 times 2, that's all we're doing. 3 cubed means you have 3 times 3 times 3, or 27. 64, 125. I'll be honest about there. That's the only one I really need you to know up to the up to there. These ones are kind of bonus. 216, 343, 512, 729, and of course 10 cubed would just add another zero for 1,000. So um, I'm saying if you know those, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So please maybe spend some time. Um, you don't necessarily need to memorize them, but uh, you know the more the merrier. So let's uh, proceed on to our, uh, our lesson here on perfect squares, perfect cubes, and the roots. Any whole number that can be represented as the area of a square with a whole number side length is a perfect square. The side length of the square is the square root. So, for instance, if I have a square here such that the area inside of it is x squared, then this side length right there is the square root of x squared, which just is x. All right. So, uh, now we'll talk about cubes. So, any whole number that can be represented as the volume, so remember volume having three dimensions of a cube with a whole number, side length is a perfect cube. The edge length of the cube is the cube root of the volume. So for instance, if we have our lovely cube here, my diagrams are always amazing. Let's say the area, sorry, the volume of this is x cubed. Then to find the side length, you would take the cube root. So you put a little cubed out in front, and that is equal to x. So x times x times x would give you x cubed. Right. So let's use an example here. Um, what we're going to be doing is determining the square roots and cube roots of numbers without using your calculator. Now, I appreciate that you could just use your calculator for some of these. Uh, I want us to know how to do this. That leads you to believe that there may be some questions on quizzes and tests that I may not let you use a calculator for. So be wary, wary of that. So, for instance, the first thing it starts with is um, Take uh, determine what the square root of 1,296 is. So the first thing that they want you to do is they want you to write what the um, uh, the prime factors are of 1,296. All right, and so I've done this already, and so I've gotten two times two times two times two times three times three times three times three. So this should be easy. Hopefully you're okay. If you need to, you can go and do your tree um, below, and now that we have those prime factors, you're going to see how easy it is for us to go ahead and uh, figure out what the square root of 1,296 is. So the little note I have here over on the side says group the factors in pairs, rearrange the factors in two equal groups. So I'm first going to put these into pairs. So notice that I can write this as 2 times 2, those ones. And I'll write these ones as 2 times 2. This one I can write as 3 times 3. This one I can write as 3 times 3. Now the reason I'm doing this is if I multiply those together, those are perfect squares. All right. So, for instance, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into equal pairings. So I'm going to write this first one as 2 times 2, and then 3 times 3. 
I'll do the same thing on the next side. 2 times 2 and 3 times 3. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9, so that must be 36. And the other one, therefore, must be 36. 36 times 36, therefore, must be 1,296. So we can say that the square root of 1,296 is equal to 36. All right. Uh, to demonstrate this like so, using your prime factorization, we had 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3. Notice how I kept this side and this side exactly the same. And that spit out a 36 like so. All right. So we know that when you take 36 and multiply it by that side, so 36 on this side and 36 is on that side of the square, you will get an area that is 1,296. So what we can say down here is that uh, since 1,296 is the um, product of two equal factors, it can be represented as the area of the square. So the square root of 1,296 is 36. Take a look at the next uh, page. What I um, asked us to do uh, was another way kind of here. Method number two, if you will, is by estimation. So it's estimation slash guess and check. So here's what we could do. So remember, we're still trying, this is the question from the page before, we're still trying to figure out what the square root of 1,296 is. So what you may be able to do is do a little bit of um, kind of kind of basic logic here. Since we know that 30 squared, so a lot of you may know that 30 squared, we know what 3 squared is, it's 9, so 30 squared is 900. So since we know that, and we know that 40 squared, therefore, must be equal to 1,600, what you can do is you can note that 1,296 must be somewhere in between there. So what I'm thinking is, if we know that 1,296 is between these two numbers, then we can predict. Well, whereabouts do we see it is? Well, we know the square root of 900 is 30, and the square root of this is 40, so we know the square root of this is going to be somewhere inside of there. But what side is it closer to? Well, I would say it's almost halfway, right? Like if you look between 9 and 600 is about, or 1600 is about 700. So 350, that's about exactly halfway. So what I would do now is I would use guess and check. So halfway between 30 and 40 would be 35 squared. So this is where you'd use your calculator and you'd find out that we'd have this is what 35 squared is. Since that's too low, then you'd try hopefully 36 and you would get the right answer. So that's one way of doing it, to finding out uh, what a perfect square is um, using estimation. Okay. Uh, the next one I want to do, and this is your, your really last example, kind of a short lesson here, is uh, dealing with cube roots. So cube roots, of course, now we have our cube over here on the side. We know the volume is like so. We want to figure out what the cube root of 2,744 is. So again, what I'll get you to do is you're going to write all the, uh, the prime factors. All right? And so for this one, um, I, again, will just generate these for you. We have 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 times 7 times 7. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure, since we're dealing with in cube root land, I'm going to put them into as many sets of 3 as I can that are the same. So in the first set of 3, I have 2 times 7. In the next set of 3, I have 2 times 7. So there's my three sets, like so. Now, we know that 14, so 2 times 7 is 14, so we have 14 times 14 times 14. So this is the same thing. You could even say is 14 cubed, if you wish. So therefore, what number do you multiply itself three times to give you 2,744? Well, it's simply the cube root of this is 14. So it's another method where you didn't have to use a calculator. Uh, so we can say it's 14 like so. And lastly, I wanted to show you guys again how we could use the estimation technique for this. All right. So if we start with, um, let's see, so we're trying to figure out what the cube root of 2744 is. We'll start out with the cube root that we know. Uh, I hope that you guys know that, for instance, like 10 cubed is equal to 1,000. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's pick another cube that you may know of easily. Um, so I just pick easy numbers. So since I know what 2 cubed is, I can assume that 20 cubed is 8,000. Well, seeing as that is between, notice that this is between those two numbers, then we can assume that, therefore, since 2744 is between those, we can assume that when you take the cube root of that number, it's going to be between 10 and 20. Now. You might ask, well, where do you start here? Notice that it's a heck of a lot closer to 1,000 than it is 8,000. 
Therefore, I would start picking some numbers to guess and check, maybe probably kind of in the 12, 13, 14 range. So and I'll start with 13, and we'll see what happens here. 13 cubed. Okay, so this would be one where uh, I guess you could multiply it by hand, but I would want you to be able to do this with your calculator. Okay, this would be a section in the on the provincial exam where they might not let you use a calculator, so you would have to be able to multiply that worst case scenario. So if I go 13 cubed, I get 2,197. Well, let's try 14 cubed. Well, since I know that 14 cubed is the right answer here, I know I was just going through the ringer, but you can find out that that would be the solution. Okay. So two different ways, using the estimation and using the um, prime factorization method. I know I didn't show you necessarily how to do that prime factorization, but I'm assuming since we did that last lesson that you are good to go. All right. So the last question I gave here is uh, using roots to solve a problem, essentially. It says a cube has the, the following volume. What is the surface area of the cube? Well, let's start off with kind of a game plan. If I can figure out what one of these side lengths is, let's call this side length x, like so. Well, then I know that if I take x and I multiply it by this side, which is also x, I have the area of that one side. And a cube, I hope you're thinking, how many sides does a cube have? Well, a cube has six. Could be a Jeopardy question tonight. Who knows? So I need to go and find out what the cube root of that number is. So, Okay, now in this example, um, I want to show you that things are always not quite as peachy as they were in the question before. What you're going to find right here is that when you try and prime factorize this thing, there's really not many because it turns out that the first prime factor actually is the cube root here. So I'll just show you why this is nasty. If you take the cube root, so on my calculator it's in here, the cube root of this number, 1, 000, sorry, 12,167, you end up getting 23. And so what that means, folks, is if you were to do my lovely factor tree, you would have 23. Um, times 23 times 23, that ends up giving you what we have right up there. So using a factor tree is not going to work as well. Uh, but as a result, we know that the side length, or ask, x, I guess I could do, since that's what I did on the other side, is 23. We can determine the surface area then by going, we know the surface area has six faces. And we know that the area of one face is x squared. So we have 6 times 23 all squared. Remember to do your brackets first. We have 23 squared, and then we'll times that by 6. And we get a surface area of 3,174. Uh, it looks to be in inches cubed, so we will say it's in... Oh, that's kind of interesting. Notice I wrote the question here in cubic feet, and this in inches cubed. Uh, just for the heck of it, let's change this to be cubic feet. So we'll write this as cubic feet as well. When you're the teacher, you can just change it as you roll. All right, my people, uh, the big thing is for this, uh, this lesson, I'm going to make the assignment fairly short on you. I just want you to be able to find the square root and cube root by hand. That's the, that's the big thing.